Welcome. This is the Home Cinema Guy channel. I'm Jeff Meyer, retired calibrator and engineer. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing the steps that I recommend to calibrate your display using the iPad or iPhone as an assistant device. I am going to outline here a process that I will in future videos go into more detail with about how to use an iPad or an iPhone to help you calibrate your display or projector. The first step in this process is that I would write down the initial values that you have so that you can track any changes and potentially reverse them back if you happen to make things worse than you started with. The second thing I would do is set the source output such that it's basically putting out what is on the material itself. The third thing you want to do is bypass any video processing that may be in devices between the source, that being a Blu-ray player or Roku or Apple TV box, going to the TV or projector. You may also just want to take these out of the loop while you're starting this process to make sure that they're not distorting what's happening. You'll want to, on your iPhone or iPad, turn off the night shift or true tone feature in there so that the colors on it are more accurate. You want to eliminate any display overscan. You want to set this HDMI input levels to the standard for video, which is usually labeled auto or limited or 16 to 235. At this point, you also want to dim the room lighting, which makes it easier to do the calibration when you're looking at the display. The next step would be to turn off any dynamic iris function in a projector or any dynamic lighting functions that are associated with an LED typically. These can interfere with the gamma and may actually hinder the quality of the image. And so it's best to start out with these functions off and then later in the process, turn them on and see if they're really a plus or a minus to the picture that you're getting. The first big step you wanna take is to choose the picture mode be, and you'll want to avoid things like vivid, sports, usually it'll be labeled something like movie, cinema, custom, something like that, that matches the color bars the closest. You'll want to set your primary colors, if that setting's available, to something that closely matches the standard color bars as well. You'll also want to set the light output on your product to a very high level. This makes it so that you can see the near black details better. Uh, on a projector, this would be the lamp power. On an OLED or an LED display, they'll usually have some light output level that you can set. You may not want to go all the way to the max, but you'll want to raise it up high enough that you can see what's happening in the near blacks. You'll want to turn off any video enhancements, then focus and align the projector, set sharp sharpness settings, You'll want to set the motion controls, which oddly can affect the color. That's why you need to set these first. Some displays, when you adjust the motion controls, you'll see them change the color as well. And so you want to go through the process of setting this in such a way that you're going to get not only better motion, but good color out of the display. At this point, you'll start adjusting the display in a more detailed level for the picture and you'll start out with adjusting the black level, then move on to the contrast and the gamma. The color temperature is adjusted last in this part of the process. Here we're gonna focus on adjusting the color of white and the things that affect white. Because white affects all the colors in an image, you need to get white as close as you can to start with before you move on to the, the more saturated colors. Next, you'll be adjusting the color settings in the display, and you'll follow that by setting the light output of the display back to something more appropriate for your room or your screen that you've got in your projection system. At this point, you want to experiment with any dynamic light level settings that may be in the product. And when you do this, you may have to go back and, and review various scenes to see how that's working. You may even slightly adjust some of the settings to make it a little more accurate if the dynamic iris function or dynamic 
LED function is interfering with things like gamma or brightness settings. At this point, you'll need to create the other video modes you may want. Sometimes you're interested in a game mode with lower lag or different lighting situations. You can take the settings that were developed previously and copy them into these modes and then you'll have to go through and adjust the settings as necessary in those modes. Now, I will go through that in other videos as well. This process before was all for the SDR, Standard Dynamic Range, part of the adjustment. Uh, that's going to be followed up by going to the HDR version, and you'll basically go through some, some process that's very similar for HDR as compared to SDR, except it won't have test patterns. You'll be completely using movie scenes for that. And then once you're done with that, you'll move on to the Dolby Vision mode and adjust anything for that, assuming your display has that function using movie scenes as well. And then finally, if you have a projector, you'll set the lens memories and aspect ratio settings on the projector for the different situations you may have if you're running a cinema scope screen or some other non-16 by 9 screen. After that's done, you'll want to copy all the settings that you've developed into the other inputs and then verify each device is actually working as you intended. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for my other videos that come out. I hope to add those out fairly soon so that you can improve your display picture and enjoy your system more. Thanks for watching. Bye.